author Evan say it. We don't do many children's books on book TV, but we are going to feature yours, Apocalai Now. Why do you think we're going to talk about your book? Well, because it's a faux children's book. It's certainly perfect for children. It's written for children, but it's also, forgive me, but it's also high political satire. And what I've really appreciated, including you having me on the show where you don't typically have children's books, is that you recognize that it is political satire for grown-ups. And when it first came out, it was number one in new release on Amazon three weeks in a row in both children's environmental books and adult political satire, political humor. So people are getting it. It's all about environmental issues. Environmental hysteria. Basically, it begins with a, a father reading to his terrified child who's terrified about global warming. And just one by one, I go through, and it's not even political, just one by one, I go through all of the various apocalypses, apocalypse being my made up plural for apocalypses. And, and the irony is, you can't have more than one apocalypse. Had they been right even once, going all the way back to, to when, when I was a child, back in the 70s, when they first threatened global cooling, global freezing. And after that, it was a hole in the ozone that was going to get us. And after that, it was acid rain that was going to get us. And just one by one, I list all the various apocalypse that, that we even threatened with, and somehow we're still here. When did you get interested in these issues? Oh, the, the issue really is the education of our children. And look, to frighten children who was it who said it? it was Rahm Emanuel who said never let a good crisis go to waste well what's a better crisis than the one that's going to end the world so I just want our children not to be afraid of global warming be concerned do the things that we can do I'm not even I'm not even a denier necessarily I'm just saying let's avoid the hysteria that allows people to take advantage of us because we're so afraid we go here's our money here's our power here's our freedom so it, it really is less of a, a, a denier's a book than it is, hey, we've been here before, we've dealt with acid rain, we've dealt with killer bees, we've dealt with mad cow, we've dealt with these things. Go to sleep, my child, you'll be okay. One of the things that you do note is that Al Gore has made a lot of money has off these crises. And not only that, it's the hypocrisy of how he lives his life. I mean, and all of them that they fly on these private jet planes to these, and, but they want us to only have a, a 60 watt bulb or a 40 watt bulb. It would be so much more convincing if they, they, they practiced what they preached. It would be so much more convincing. And hypocrisy doesn't just mean that you preach higher ideals and because of human shortcomings, you fail. I'm a big fan of preaching higher than humanity and, and we're gonna fail because we're humans. But this is the idea that the rules don't apply to you. And that's a very scary thing when you're talking about government, when you're talking about power, when you're talking about an elitist and a ruling class that doesn't think the rules apply to them. So yeah, when Al Gore's a hypocrite, that's, that's, that's pretty disconcerting. Mr. Sayed, do you write books full time? I am in what I call the conservative thought industry. So I sell my conservative thoughts via, this is the first time I've ever written a children's book, which is also an adult book, but a children's book, I have a serious book called The Kindergarten of Eden, How the Modern Liberal Thinks, which is based on a lecture that I gave to the Heritage Foundation, which is the single most viewed lecture in their entire history. All right, not Ronald Reagan who used to speak there, not Margaret Thatcher, Jeff, me. <laughs> and what was the uh, uh, point of that lecture? I, I, I explain how it is that so many good, smart, wonderful, caring, generous, loving people, like my cousins, like my neighbors, like my colleagues, Democrats though, how it is that they reject fact and reason and in doing so, invariably side with evil, failure, and wrong. And I'll give you two examples. How do you look at Ferguson, Missouri, and decide that the, 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 this racist cop shot down an innocent young black child in cold blood? How do you get it so wrong? Right? How do you look at the Middle East and decide that not only is that tiny liberal democracy of Israel the problem, not all those Islamic fascists, the misogynist, the homophobic, and the xenophobic, and I do believe even a little bit anti-Semitic Muslim nations that surround it, but of all the nations on the planet, that's the one nation you're gonna boycott and sanction and divest from that one? How, how do you look at the facts and get it so wrong? And I explain it in a way that is so satisfying to so many that when I gave that talk originally, I was a neophyte in the political world. My history is as an entertainer, as a stand-up comedian, as a television writer, as, as a, a movie writer, as a documentarian. I only became involved in politics 
post 9-11. And then when I gave that speech, it was my first time in Washington, D.C. as a speaker. And it continues to go viral to this day. Who's your illustrator? It's a wonderful editorial cartoonist named A.F. Bronco. You, you know, the funny thing about editorial cartoonists is you know his work. You've seen it a thousand times. But because they scribble their names in the corner, you don't know that you know his work. But he's everywhere. He's, he's award-winning. He's nationally syndicated. And the fact that he jumped on to, to my project, that I wrote this and I said to him, you've got to write a, a, a cartoon every single day. In the meantime, can you, write, can you do 20 for me? And the fact that he said yes, that, that really gave me a feeling that we got something here. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Here's the book, Apocalypse Now, by Evan Sayet. Thanks for being with us yeah, on my Book My pleasure. Today. Thank you for having me.